Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. How are you tonight? Hello, hello, teacher. Nice, nice to see you. Very nice. So, how was the day? Well, we almost finished this week. Remember that for the next week, uh, not on Friday, but the next Monday, we're going to finish the whole platform. So, please move on with the platform. That is very, very important. Okay. So, and uh, yesterday we were checking about crisis and uh, some other factors and we started the book with some uh, some vocabulary and some related things. So tell me, uh, when, you sp when you think about natural disasters that may affect uh, a company, what natural disasters do you believe can affect us here in El Salvador? My case is here. Earthquakes. Natural disaster is earthquake. Earthquake. Or, or storms. A lot of storms because uh, we have in my in, in my company we have a a lot of uh, terrain terreno. How do you say? A lot land. of uh -huh, land. A lot of land. Exactly. A lot of land is. This is the problem with the with we have uh, uh too much water. Okay. Yeah, that is a, a problem, right? So uh, for example, you know what is a uh, a landslide? Landslide? No, I don't know. Anybody knows what a landslide is? No teacher. Okay, a landslide is when, for example, from a mountain, the earth mm -hmm. comes down into the houses and things like that one. So that is a landslide. Okay, it's like uh, Las Colinas. <laughs> something like that. Very bad, that situation. Yes, yes, it's exactly something like that. Okay. Very good. Okay, another uh, another one, another word that we have to remember is flood. Do you remember what is a flood? Anybody knows what a flood is? When the water is covered, the, the, the land. Very good. That is it, when the water comes into the houses or into the streets or some things like that. So that is like a, a flood is related to water. And uh, I believe that yes, those and the rain, sometimes when it rains a lot, right? Uh, that also causes some problems, some situations with, uh, not only with the businesses, but also with regular life, okay? And okay. sorry, Go ahead. flood is like when the water is out the streets. Uh, yeah, it might be something like that. It can be like that. It can be like when the water is. I mean, for, for example, when it's raining a lot, sometimes there are some neighborhoods that they get floated, right? So things like that. Como inundación. Exactly. That is that word. So it's like a flood, right? Very good. Uh, let me think, any other? Yeah, tsunamis, you know what is a tsunami? Anybody knows what a tsunami is? Nobody, okay? A tsunami is when it's like an earthquake in the ocean. And that causes that some, uh, like from the ocean goes into the land, right? Gets into the land. So that is not that common, but that happens sometimes. So for example, there in, in Thailand, I believe, I remember there was a large tsunami a while ago and that was very, very famous. Um, so whenever you go to the ocean, you need to be careful of that. Okay. 
So uh, what other, besides the natural disasters, what other circumstances can cause a crisis into a company? What do you think? Where the forest is how fire, how, how do you say incendio? Fire, yeah. Fire. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. So if there is a forest and that happened here, do you, you remember that we were uh, discussing yesterday that there were some, uh, it was very hot, that uh, everything was very hot. So that caused that in some parts of the forest where there were like dry plants, they get into fire, right? And then it causes a lot of damages. Uh, here, maybe it's not that much. But in the United States, in California, have you ever heard those news that in California, for example, there are large, very large um, fires. So, and they cause a lot of damage to houses and, of course, to the economy, to businesses, things like that. One. So, animals, lots of problems causing them, hectares of, of fire. So, that was a big, big problem. Okay, so we have fire. Any other any other situation that you believe can cause a crisis into a company? Can happen is uh, outrages. That is true. The power. Outrages. Yeah. So is it common yes. for you there where you live or where you work to have power outages? Yeah, in my company, we work with uh, machinery. They, oh, okay. they are, uh -huh. it's a manufacturing. It's a factory, and, okay. And... Yes, when happens uh, power outages by rain, we have a lot of problems because we don't have work. Mm, okay, so uh, do, don't you have like plants, those gasoline plants or some other uh, like second second plan in case this happens? So you stop. It stops because we don't have a second plant. Mm, okay. Yeah, that is a big problem, definitely. And yes, power outages are very, very... Uh, it's something that causes problem. I mean, for example, here in my house, when I don't have energy, I have to to go to other places. I don't know if you have noticed, but sometimes the class is not uh, the same. It's, it's in another place. It's because of that one. Sometimes we don't have internet or we don't have uh, energy, so I have to move. I have to run to other places so I can teach the class. So, uh, But sometimes it's not possible. I mean, in your company, for example, you cannot move the, much, the machines, right? Uh, you have to, to wait for the energy to come back. Okay, what other things can cause you problems? Uh, can cause problems or crisis in a, in a company? What else can you think of? Uh, I think maybe occupan, occup, occupational accidents. That is another problem. There are some industries, there are some kind of companies that, uh, well, it's, it's like the probabilities of having an accident is more, right? So, uh, for example, yeah. in the factories, uh, go ahead. If, for example, in the construction, it's, it's, uh, it's, most, um, it's most probably that have uh, this kind of accident. That is true, constructions, factories. So there are many kinds of things, many kinds of industries that can can have a, an accident. And of course, sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's possible to continue working, but sometimes you have to stop, right? And uh, it's not good for the companies, for the reputations, for many things. So uh, yeah, that is another thing that can cause a crisis in a company. So what other thing can you think of? Uh, any other 
situations that can cause crisis in a company? I was thinking, for example, for situations that are not in our country, but in a different country, for example, Wall Street, right? Have you seen that for when when the Wall Street uh, market falls down, uh, even here in El Salvador, we have problems, right? The gasoline goes up and uh, there are many things, there are many things that happen. So have you ever heard something like that? Yes, it's a big problem because we we uh, our economy is depending about about the situation in the other country, specifically US, USA. Yeah, a lot of problems come from the USA, right? So, uh, and yes, when they have problems with the market, that affects directly to our country and companies. Okay, so, and for example, another situation is the pandemic, right? Maybe it's not that common that we have a pandemic, but that caused a crisis in, in a lot of sectors. Uh, do you know anybody that they had to close their business because of the pandemic? By any chance? Close what, teacher? their businesses because of the pandemic. In my case, Mr. Um I lost my last my my words because in in 2020 2020 I was working in Nicaragua but uh, the pandemic caused that the war stopped uh, but for it, um, I need to move it to El Salvador again. I back to El Salvador. And I start again in the beginning to work. Ah, I imagine yeah. that is interesting. In my case, I, I was affected in in this case. Yeah, that happens. What kind of work were you doing there in in Nicaragua? Uh, in the design department because I'm design it, um, I am factor technician designer for clothes for an industry. Ah, oh, that is an interesting job. Eh? Very good. And yeah. uh, here you are working on the same sector. I mean, you are still designing. Yes, of course. I, well, I am working in Sona Frank International in a color room department. Okay. Very good. And eh? so the good thing is that you were able to to find another solution. But sometimes in those moments, we are very afflicted, right? We are like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? And uh, yeah, I, I had a friend, for example, that they had a bar. You know, it was kind of nice here in Santa Ana, but because of the pandemic, because they, they couldn't, I mean, open. And uh, people, they were not allowed to go have fun with bars and things like that they had to they had to to close and they sold lots of things i mean even today they still have to pay some things that they had at that time so it was difficult so do you know any other sector that might be affected by the pandemic or anybody of you were affected by the pandemic Uh, the construction was affected a lot because uh, the construction stopped in these days, in those days. Yeah, it's true, right? So it was not possible to continue moving on. And what did you do? I mean, uh, you were able to just stop and then continue whenever everything was fine or uh, you had to find different solutions. What did you do? Mm, a lot of people uh, uh, lost the job uh, or stopped 
Ya. Yeah, that is true. So lots of people they lost their jobs, right? So, and yes, crisis sometimes comes in different ways. Um, have you ever heard the the story of Exxon? No. Mm, okay, there are documentaries about those things, and sometimes that happens. Uh, Exxon was a company, a multi-millionaire company in the U.S. And one day, suddenly they closed. They went to bankruptcy because the managers, the CEOs and all those people, the CFO, uh, they <laughs> made bad decisions and they uh, invested money or they stole money. And then, of course, the companies, the company was broken. Imagine, imagine that situation. Imagine that some people are working very nice. You go to the office like a regular day. And then you see that the police is there and they're selling. I mean, you don't have a job anymore and you don't, you won't get any payment to the, today. You won't uh, get any, any money. In, in the meantime, you are looking for another job. That was very difficult. So uh, you can watch some documentaries about those ones. And there, in the U.S., there were... Uh, uh, or there has been a lot of situations like that. So I was thinking, do you know about situations like that here in El Salvador, where companies or the managers of companies, they made bad decisions and then the companies had to close? Do you remember anything like that? Or do you know? Yes, teacher, I know uh, a company uh, and and the, my father worked uh, in call laboratorios cosmos. Okay. Uh, is is uh, was broken because bad decision of the managers. Okay. So uh, and it was like that. I mean, suddenly one day they say, okay, we're going to close everything. That happened. Yes. Okay. And what did your father do? Uh, other, other, other own. Uh, I acquired, I did, I acquired the company. In, in, in continuing. Continue, but uh, with with the with the with the years broken again, and today is um uh, laboratorios coming. Mm, okay. So yeah, that happens sometimes. It's a very interesting thing because that is like something that the companies they do when they have a price, right? They try to get uh, money from other companies and they try to, uh, I mean, sometimes they sell all the whole company or get some shares so they can get the money so they can move. I remember that we watched a video where there was like a situation like that. Do you remember that the manager says, oh, we're not going to fire anybody, that anybody has to take vacation, one or two days on vacation, so everybody continue working. So, that was a very nice solution, but not all the companies think about these kind of solutions, right? Some companies, they just say, you know what? It doesn't matter. We're going to fire people. That is, I mean, that is part of the crisis. Uh, this year, for example, uh, I work at Google, and they decided to fire a lot of people. And also Amazon, I don't know if you have heard that, Amazon, they fire a lot of people in the U.S. So, and this is because of the crisis. And this is because of the pandemic. The pandemic caused that crisis that is impacting still uh, nowadays. So that is interesting. And there are other situations. For example, I'm thinking about right now, uh, do you remember these hamburgers that were very famous, that was biggest? Yes, I remember. Uh, yeah, I don't see those restaurants anymore, and I remember that I really like those hamburgers. So 
Do you know what happened to that company? Hard Hardis. No. So? <clears throat> yeah, I remember that it was biggest, the one from the hamburgers. In the other, in the other case, it's a uh, yes, uh, a long, long time ago. Uh, I remember Almacenes Schwartz. Ah, yeah. Uh, is that the other example? The the broken company. That is true, right? What happened with that one? I don't remember. I don't know. Oh yeah. Almacenes Kismet también. Kismet, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, it's true. Other hamburger called uh, Hardis too. I remember because my mom worked in this in this company. It is uh, like a biggest. Mm, okay, like biggest. Yeah, I don't remember that uh, to be honest with you, but yeah, I was remembering about biggest that I really like those uh those hamburgers and nowadays we don't have that one and all those companies they disappear because of the same ones right something happened there was like a crisis and definitely that impacts everything so not all the companies can survive forever and not all the companies uh surrender on that one so and I believe that all companies have different crises right that happens sometimes. Good, good introduction for tonight. So let's check about the, uh, let's check about the attendance, okay? Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Arquimedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erica Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present teacher. Good. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Sabor Giron Sanchez. Present. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Present. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present teacher. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. <coughs> Present. Okay. Lucy Natalie Juarez de Ramirez. Right here. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Erroda Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Sulma, Jan ah, okay. Sulma Janet Ramirez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Okay, very good. So let's continue. Ah, uh, yeah, I see now. Just thinking about those other things. Okay. So, let me just check. Okay, we're going to watch a small video. And uh, as usual, we're going to check about the video, check and comment about those ones, and uh, check vocabulary, pronunciation, and things like that. Okay? So, here we go. Let's go back here. So, I know you guys deal with major public relations issues as well like any government organization would. And what's great about social media is that you can end a media relations crisis before it gets too big. 
And there's two, there's, I've got a lot of information on this, but there's a, a big issue here. One is you have to have a place to publish your opinion and you have to be listening to the audience. If you don't have those two things, you simply cannot end a media relations crisis via social media. It just can't be done. You have to be listening to what people are saying and you have to have your own space to publish, which is a blog. Now, I'm gonna show you a great example of how this happened. So this is a story of a woman right here. You see this woman right here? She is a mommy blogger. Mommy bloggers are a very passionate group of people. And she went into uh, the Atlanta airport in Georgia and she wrote an article and she had a horrible story where her, the TSA agents, you know, the security agents that uh, work security at the airport, they took her son away from her. She had a small child with her and her son was ripped from her arms and she couldn't find her son and it was this harrowing tale. She puts the story up on a Friday afternoon around one or two o'clock. The response in the social media sphere is tremendous. People are going crazy and the comments are like, I can't believe this was happening. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a parent too. If this happened to my child, I'd be going crazy. Well, the TSA was listening and they saw that people were talking about this. So they went and looked about this, in, this woman and they found her security footage going through the airport and they showed via video that her child was never taken away from her. They posted that by seven o'clock on Friday. Now what is most common by organizations when a bad story hits on Friday? Oh, it'll blow over by the weekend. It'll be much smaller issue on Monday. The internet doesn't know from weekends and weekdays. And the other thing is if they hadn't done this, this woman probably would have been on all the news networks talking about this story. Now what they did is they completely discredited this woman because they showed video evidence that this woman was not, you know, didn't have her child taken away from her. And on the, if you go to the TSA's blog, because they, they posted this up on their blog, over 400 people commented on it. And, you know, there was varied opinions, but in majority it was like, you know, way to go. I'm impressed that you did this. Now, why were they able to do this? Two reasons. One, they had a blog in place. And two, they had a disaster communications plan in place. And this is a big issue you have to realize, is that every one of you in this room needs to know how to handle a, a situation like this. When it hits, you can't wait for Jeff's opinion. I'm sorry, Jeff, but you can't because the internet's not waiting for your opinion. And you can't either. But what you need to do is talk with the group and say, okay, how do we communicate in a crisis? How do we deal with this? Okay, what did you get from this little video? Hey, anybody? He, he talked about the importance to be listened to the audience or the public because uh, as a mother uh, to, to describe an article and talk about uh, about aerolinia, aerolinia, how much teacher? Airline. Airline. And that has ha, a, a bad reputation for airline. But, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. So that was it, right? So. Uh, yes, you can see that a little thing can cause a problem. A little thing that can cause a lot of damage to companies, sometimes a millionaire company. I mean, a rumor, and that happens in Wall Street as well. In Wall Street, if they, there is a rumor that the company has some problems and things like that, people, they start selling their shares, and uh, of course, that causes a big problem. So, yeah, that is it. Any other comment from, from the video? He said the, the that the social media has a big 
a big power and big influence. So, and also you, you can trust in all the information that you watch in this in this type of social media so you have to 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 make sure that inform that the source is is um how do you say confiable trust reliable reliable so uh, in this case we said that it's important that a group and the company ha have a, a, a way to to handle this this type of cases because in these banks um we have that all the problems are published in the social media so the companies uh, have to to learn how to hand, handle this kind of situation and a, and avoid but but the reviews for the company because for this can can lose a lot of sales or clients. Very true, very true. And I mean there is a big problem with those things of the reviews, you know, because I believe and I do it myself. Uh when I want to go to a restaurant, for example, I always check the reviews, right? Is it good, is it bad? The prices are good. Is it uh, nice parking? Things like that. And I see that a lot of people, they say nice place or bad place. But I was reading, uh, and also, actually we saw a video about that one in another class, uh, that there are people that they uh, they work is to give good reviews. They get paid for that one. And sometimes uh, also there are uh, artificial intelligence that they set good reviews. So sometimes the reviews that we see there are not real, are from real from people that they they get paid for that one, or they make videos, of course, in YouTube for saying this is a good place. But also with the reviews online, uh, and well, that is not good, right? We expect that real people, real customer, they uh, provide real views, uh, and a bad review, one little bad review, can cause a lot of problems. Definitely, that is for sure. I have seen that a lot. Good. Any other comments from the video? Very good. So we're going to continue with the book then. Let me just go there. Here's it. We will continue with the unit number three. So managing crisis. And it says, I will be able to suggest a course of action to face a crisis. And in the number one says, does your company have a contingency plan in case a crisis occurs? Aha, uh -huh, people, does the company have that? Don't you know? I think all the companies have uh, to to take a contingency plan because it's in the in the laws. They should, right? They should have a contingency plan. I have a question for you. Do you have a contingency plan? I mean, in case you are very sick or in case you lose your job, or anything like that. Do you have a plan on that? Because this is not only for companies, it's also for people, right? In case I get sick, I think, yes. Because I have a, like, a, a, how do you say about the game? Mm, that is a very good question. Let me check on that. I, don't... I have a boutique. So we can, we can show some medicaments in order to to get better quickly. Okay. So yes, I believe that uh, everybody will have things like that one, a kind of medicine or anything like that. It's a first aid kit. That is what I didn't remember. First aid kit. Uh, okay, so yeah, that is like a plan for that one, right? 
And then it says, should an organization have a reaction team in case of emergencies? What do you think? Maybe yes, maybe not. In my company, we have a, a reaction team. And in, in fact, uh, um, one month ago, we, as a team, we go to the firefighter to receive a, a course of first, first aid. Okay. That is a very good thing. Yeah, you need to be prepared, not only to have a team, but also to get trained in certain situations like earthquake, fires, things like that. What are we are going to do, right? We are not going to run. We are going to stay calm and look for uh, an exit and things like that, right? So, yeah. Okay, we have a conversation here. I'm gonna read the conversation, check the pronunciation, and of course, then you are going to practice. Did you hear about our competition? There is a rumor about their CEO mistreating his employees and it is out everywhere on the internet. It must be an employee trying to sue the company. They could have vented this issue, but their public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Yes, there is even a video and pictures out there now. Our PR department wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way out of this speech. Pronunciation questions. In the last one, <coughs> uh, excuse me. In the last one, uh, was meaning fish. Ah, uh, well, we're going to check vocabulary later on, but pinch is like a, a situation, something that um is happening. It's like a, a conflict, something that is on the spot. Everybody can see that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other pronunciation questions? Okay, if we don't have any pronunciation questions, we are going to Teacher, practice. Uh, go ahead. Pronounce, how pronounce mistreating? Mistreating? Mistreating. Mistreating. Thank you. Good. Any other question? How do you pronounce internet? Internet. Repeat it. Internet. 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 In what is okay, we're going to check the vocabulary later on, but mistreating is like when you treat somebody bad. It's like when your boss says, you don't know anything about this, and they yell at you and they treat you bad. So that is mistreating. Okay, so let's practice then. Uh, let's start with Ivan Petrovich and Vanessa. Let's see how it goes. Okay, uh, I answer. Okay. Okay. Um, did you hear about our competitions? No. There is a rumor about their CEO mistreat his employees and mistreating. Mistreating. Thank you mistreating his employees <clears throat> and he's out everywhere on the internet. It must be an employee trying to sue the company. They could have prevented the issue, but the public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, 
the PR department should should have called for a process <coughs> conference. Yes, there is even a video and pictures out there now. Or PR department would would it have hello allow the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way out of this pitch. Pinch. 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 Very good. Nice. Thank you. Fatima and Nelson Errodas. Did you hear about our competition? There is a rumor about their CEO, Ms. Training. He is employed and it is out everywhere on the internet. It must be an employee trying to sue the company. They could have prevented the, this issue, but their public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Yes, there is even a video and pictures out there now. Our PR department would have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they found a way out of this pinch. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Now we're going to listen to Jose Alberto and Holman Saul. Okay, teacher. Um, I be Nina, right? Yeah. Okay. Did you hear about our competition? There is a rumor about their CEO mistreating his employees, his employees, and it is out everywhere on the internet. I must be an employee trained to to sue the company. They could they could have prevented this issue but their public relations department is not that solid i think so too when the rumor went online the pr department should have called for a press conference yes there is even a video and pictures out there now our pr department uh, will wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far i hope they find uh i hope they find a way out of this pinch very good perfect thank you now daniel archimedes and carla lorena okay ladies first okay did you hear about her competition there is a rumor about the CEO mistreating his employees and it is out everywhere everywhere on the internet. It's it must be an employee trying to sue the company. They could have prevented these issues, but their public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Yes, there is even a video and picture on out there now. For PR department would have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they think Fine. I hope they find a way out of this pinch. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Herman Alexander, is it possible for you, Herman? Yeah, yes, teacher. Very good. And uh, Daniel Antonio Luna. Okay. You heard about our competition. <laughs> there is a rumor about a CEO is training his employees and is out everywhere on the internet. 
it must be an employee trying to sh shoe the company. They could have prevented this in insurance. But the public relation department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Yes, there is even a video and picture out there now. Our PR department will have a lot of the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way out of this thing. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, Jamie, Raquel, and Ospin, Alexis. Uh, hello, Jamie and Oslin, is possible for you? Yes. Okay. Uh, Jamie and Raquel, is possible for you? Okay, Oswin, you are going to work them with Lucy Natalie. Is it possible for you, Lucy Natalie? Hi, teacher. Okay. So with Oswin, please. Okay, ladies first. Okay. Did you hear about our competition? There is a rumor about the CEO mistreating his employees and it is out everywhere on the internet. This must be an employee trying to sue the company. They could have prevented this issue, but the public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Yes, there is even a video and pictures out there now. Our PR department wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way out of his of this pinch. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Now, Sulma Janet. And uh, let me see. Samantha, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Very good. And uh, for Sulma, is it possible, right? So let's do it. Yes. OK. Uh, did you hear about our competition? There is a rumor about their CEO mistreating his employees, and it is out everywhere on the internet it must be an employee trying to sue the company they could have prevented the issue but their public rel relations department is not that solid i think so too when the rumor went online the pr department should have called for a press conference yes there is even a video and pictures out there now. Our PR department wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way out of this pinch. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So let's see. Kenya Cecilia, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Good. Hector Francisco. In here, teacher. Yes, please, because we don't have uh, more people. She's the last. Okay. Do you hear about our competition? There is rumor about their CEO mistreating his employees, and it is out everywhere on the internet. It must be an employee trying to show the company they could have prevent the issue, but the public relations department is not that solid. I think so too. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called it for a press conference. Yes, 
There is even a video and picture out there now. Our PR department wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. I hope they find a way of this finch. Very good, perfect, thank you. All right, so I guess everybody did it, right? Is there anybody missing to read? All right, everybody did it. Okay, so let's check vocabulary. Uh, competition, when they say competition, what are they talking about? It's about the, the other company, the the in the in the in the same uh the same work. Perfect. That is it. The competition is other company that is in the same industry as we are, right? So that will be it. So it's not our company, it's the other company. And you said there is a rumor about their CEO. So CEO, what is CEO, my friends? So like a manager. It's like a manager. The CEO is the top manager, right? It's the chief executive officer. And there are other, like that one, like the CFO, that is the chief financial officer, and so on. But the CEO is the boss of the boss, right? Mistreating. What was mistreating? Do you remember? It's like abuse. Very good. That is a very good uh, comparison. Abuse. So that happens, right? In some works, in some job environment, sometimes they are doing a bad, a bad thing, right? Okay, what is, let's see. Sue, trying to sue, it says. What is sue? It's like a demand. Like a demand, like a legal procedure, right? That you are going to, you need money because you believe that you were in some way mistreated, right? So that's why you, you say they abuse about my situation, my relationship, and my money. That is it. In the U.S., you can do that, I mean, for everything. Here in El Salvador, too, but the people, they don't do it. But you can do it. I mean, you can sue a lot of people. Uh, of course, you need to, to research a little bit more about that, but it's possible to sue people. Uh, they could have prevented this issue, but the public relations department is not that solid. Uh -huh. Let me see any other. What is a press conference? Press conference is where the company calls to the to the press to talk about uh, about some problems. Very good. Regarding that one, I'm going to send you in the chat uh, one word, actually two, that are very related with that one. Spokeswoman. And Spokeman. So Spokewoman is for, for women, of course, and men, right? And uh, that is like the authorized person to speak to the press. So that is a Spokewoman or a Spokeman. Uh, it's that person that is authorized. No other people can speak with the press, only that person. So that is something that happened with that. Uh, it says something interesting here. Uh, wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. What is this far here? Could be yeah. um, until this day or something like that. Well, that is not about time. When you say this far is because the problem 
uh, escalated. Escalated and now it's bigger. I mean, uh, sometimes the companies, they do that one, right? So if you have a problem, they come and have a meeting with other persons and you agree. They say, okay, we're going to give you this money or this or this other thing. So, but if you don't address, look at all the all the vocabulary that we're using. If we don't address the situation or the problem uh, very fast, that can escalate and it can it can come very far. So it's to the last consequence, something like that. It's like get worse. It's like getting worse in this context. It's like that. It's like that. Okay, and we check that pinch is like a problem situation, uh, something like that. One. Do you have any questions here in this conversation? Okay, if the PR department, what what department is? Uh, that is this one, public relations department. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other question? Okay, good. So now we're going to do exercise three. Look at the conversation and complete the sentences. Compare your answers with classmates. So according to the conversation, you are going to complete the conversation. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that so you can check. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to complete that one, and then we're going to check, okay?
Okay, number one, who wants to share number one? Me. Okay. They could have prevent this issue, but the public relations department is not that solid. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Carla Lorena. Number two, who wants to share number two? Me. Okay, go ahead. When the rumor went online, the PR department should have called for a press conference. Perfect. Should have called for a press conference. And uh, number three. Me. Okay. Our PR department would have allowed the situation to come in this far. Okay, so our PR department wouldn't have allowed the situation to come this far. Perfect, nice, very good. So let's move on the video. Uh, we're going to watch it tomorrow, not today. So it says unit number three, how to use past models. Okay, this is something very easy, but it's also very, okay. And it says, look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fatima, could you please read the chart? Use the past perfect model verbs to talk about situations that didn't happen in the past. Hypothetical situations. Use, use who could have mass past participle to express that something that was possible in the past. Or to express that someone had the ability to do something in the past, but they decided not to do it. Decided not. Decided. Please continue. And the manager could have prepared a contingency plan but he decided to focus on something else. Continue, please. Jews should have mass past participle to make suggestions, suggestions. in the past, suggestions in the past, or to say that something would have been a good idea, but that it wasn't done. Example, the employees should have keep calm. Use will have mass past participle to show past willingness. It is a similar to the third conditional, but an if clause is not required. Example, our public relation department will have done a better job, but they didn't receive any report to the issue. Very good, perfect. So this is the grammar, very easy. So we're going to uh, use the past perfect model. Remember that the past perfect is the auxiliary have and the past participle. Okay, that would be it. And uh, to talk about situations that didn't happen in the past. So it's hypothetical, it's not true. So situations that it could have been happened but didn't happen, okay? So, for example, it says, use could have, this is cool, this is very important, cool. Could have plus the past participle to express that something that was possible in the past or that someone had the ability to do something in the past, but they decided not to do it, okay? Uh, this is very important. So this is hypothetical in the past. Okay, so the example says the mayor could have prepared a contingency plan, but she, he decided to focus on something else. So this is something that the mayor could have done, but he didn't do it. He decided not to do it. It's hypothetical. It's not true. Okay, so that's why we're going to use this one. It's like when we say in Spanish, el gerente pudo haber preparado un plan de contingencia, pero no lo hizo. He didn't do it. 
hypothetical. All right. So this first one is very do you have any questions with the first one with could have? Remember that cool is the equivalent of can for the past. So something like that is here. Okay, the next one. Teacher, go ahead, go ahead. And if, if the, the sentence is negative, in, in which part you have to put it? In couldn't or could haven't? No, in couldn't. It's going to be in the model. Couldn't. In the model. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Any other questions? Okay, the next one says you should have plus the past participle to make suggestions. So should is for suggestions in the past. So it's a suggestion that maybe if the person did it in the past, the result has been different, but it didn't. It's a hypothetical suggestion in the past. Or to say something would have been a good idea, but that it wasn't done. So yeah, we, it's like a regret when we go back and we try to, to think about something that we have done, but we didn't. For example, the employee should have kept calm, okay? So this is like for suggestions. The other one is for ideas that could happen, okay? And this one is for suggestions. So for example, the employees should have kept calm. Los empleados debieron haber tenido calma. Good idea, but that happened anymore. It's not possible to do it. Uh, again, the negative on this one is going to be shouldn't in the model, okay? Do you have any questions we should have in the past parts? Teacher. Yep. Um, in the in the in the in the both example the examples, uh, we can change the 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 word. Uh, which word? Uh, should and cool. Uh, you can change it, but you are going to express something different. Cool. It's like you want to know, to say, what you want to express is that that is something that it could be happen. But if you mm -hmm. use show, it's like a suggestion. So that is the only but, difference. But you can but use if, both. If if um I just say the manager should have prepared a contingency plan. Yeah, that is like a suggestion. That was a very good idea. He didn't do it. It was a very good idea. That's what you want to express. Uh, it's very similar in some situations. In some other situations, it might be very different. Uh, but in these ideas, yeah, it's, it's something that you can change. It, it won't be so any problem. We, when we uh, add the, the the other part, the but he decided, uh, uh, we, we can use cool. Uh, mm. Well, we could, mm, no, because uh, in the second part, you are saying exactly what happened. So that uh -huh. is real. So we are not going to use cool because cool is a possibility or is the past of can. So in the next example, the employee should have kept calm. If I uh, add the other part and I put a, 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 a comma and, and I say, but they decide do not do it for example uh -huh. i can i can use cool and not should so, i mean you uh, can the, use the employees the, the employees could have kept calm but they don't do it or, or something like that mm, I, I understand your idea okay so uh -huh. for both words for cool and show if you want to add like a compliment with an idea that really happened is possible. Mm -hmm. So you can say for, for both, for cool and sure, you can say, mm -hmm. for example, the employees should have kept calm, but they ran away, for example. Mm -hmm. They were desperate. So it's possible for both situations to complete the idea with other parts. 
Ah, okay, thank you. thank you. Very good. Good, any other question? Okay, let's check the last one. Use would have and past participle to show past willingness. Do you remember what is willingness? Okay, willingness is like uh, when you, how can I say this? Uh, when somebody asks you to do something, maybe you are not that excited to do that something, but you are willing to do it. For example, in mind that your boss comes and says, uh, okay, somebody has to come on Saturday. Who is willing to come? So it's not an obligation but one person has to come. And the volunteer says, I am willing to come. I'm not happy, but I can come. I mean, yeah, not a problem. So that is willing. So you, when you uh, have the idea of doing something, even when it's not something that you really want to do or you have to do, something like that. So, and it says it is similar to the third conditional, but if, but an if clause is not required. And let's check the example. It says, our public relations department would have done a better job, but they didn't receive any report on the issue. Here, again, uh, for the question that asked uh, Jose Alberto, we can say only our public relations department would have done a better job, and that's it. So you can do it short or long, no problem, okay? And it's going to be like when you say in Spanish, nuestro departamento relaciones públicas, hubieran hecho un mejor trabajo. Okay. But I mean, it's hypothetical. They were able to do it, but it's, it's hypothetical, right? They are not. They are not going to do it because it's another company. It's not our company. All right. Do you have any questions about this, Grandma? Clear as of chatta. Aha, uh -huh. let's check. The exercise number five. Complete the sentences with past models, the verbs and hints in parentheses. And, uh, well, the number one is already there. The crisis management team could have created, and you can see that in the parentheses we have the verb, the main verb, create. So we're going to use could have created. So look how one little word transforms. So we're going to transform one word in three words. The first one is going to be the model, depending on what you want to say. And then it says past possibility, suggestion, willingness. So in the parentheses also, uh, at the end of the sentence, it says if it's, uh, if it's going to be a possibility, remember that we're going to use cool. If it's going to be a suggestion, we're going to use should. And if we are going to uh, write a willingness one, we are going to write would. So two things you have to check. The verb in the parenthesis that is going to transform. And also if it's a suggestion, if it's willingness, or if it's possibility. And with that one, you will be able to finish the sentences. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions with the activity that we're going to do right now? Okay, let's practice. I will give you a few minutes for you to finish the exercise. Let's see how it go.
Okay, so number one, number two, who wants to share number two? Or do you need more time? A manager should have been honest with employees about the product. Record. Perfect. That is amazing, Daniel. So the manager should have been honest with the employees about the product recalls. That is it. Uh, do you remember what is product recalls? Where the products have problems. That is it. When the product has problems and you need to, to get them back, right? To get them returned. So that is not good. Number three, who wants to share number three? Number three, the president will have a request for a press conference, but there was no time for the paperwork. Perfect, that is it. So the president will have requested for press conference, but there was no time for paperwork. So do you see that all, you can change only one little word and what you want to express is different. That happens when you go to other countries. If you say one word and you change that word for other word, the gringo there is going to understand something different. Okay, that that's why these little things are very important. Because depending on what you want to say, I mean, I don't know if I told you the story about that one. I mean, uh, if you say, for example, uh, my mom is at the hospital or my mom is in the hospital, it's totally different. Only when one word, right? At the hospital, she's visiting. In the hospital, she is there as a patient, right? So if you say, hey, your mom is in the hospital, the other person is going to say, my goodness, what happened, right? One little word makes a difference. Good, very good, uh, Daniel. Okay, let's see. Uh, number four, who wants to share number four? Number four. I'm not, I'm not sure, teacher, but I try. Of course, go ahead. The employees should have I don't know if it's make or or made the deal, but they prefer to go to go on strike. Okay, very good. The only thing is that you can see here that this is the verb in the parentheses that we have to use. So it has to be the employees should have taken. Taking. Taking, okay. yeah. Taking the deal, but they prefer to go on strike. Mm, not good. Strikes are not good, but anyways. It's not good for the users, but it's good for the employees. <laughs> uh, what is deal? Do you remember what is deal? Maybe I'll come Okay, yeah. So when you agree, it's an agreement, right? About an arrangement or something like that. Very good, perfect. That is good, perfect. Okay, number five, who wants to share number five? When the earthquake hit, the supplier should have used different routes of transportation for the deliveries. Okay, very good. So the only thing that if this is a possibility here, we're going to use could. So could have used. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much, Vanessa. And uh, the last one, the crisis. Who wants to share the last one? Uh, that is a possibility, yeah. Teacher, Go ahead. the crisis could have been a boy with good planning. Very good. The crisis could have been avoided with good planning. That is it. Okay. 
So this topic is important because it's, it's common. I mean, when you are speaking about possibilities of some plans or something like that, sometimes you are able to use this kind of grammar. So we're going to practice one time. I'm going to leave you here the chart and I want you to, in the chat, I want you to write four sentences, two affirmative and two negatives, okay? So for example, you can say uh, uh, the doctor could have uh, made the surgery on Tuesday. I don't know. Or the the patient who shouldn't shouldn't have uh, thought that he was going to be the next in line. Something like that. Anything that you want to write. It's going to be two sentences in affirmative, two sentences in negative here in the chats. Okay? And I will be checking. Write a sentence in negative. Wait. It's going to be two affirmative and two negatives. So it's four in total. With with cualquiera. With, with any. Yeah, whatever you want to say. Just remember that if you want to express an action in the past, it's cool. If you want to express a suggestion, it should. If you want to express willingness, it's will. That is the only difference, but you can write any kind of sentence.
Okay, my friends, it seems very good, the examples that you have sent me. Uh, so I want to ask you, do you have any questions about this grammar? Teacher, how do you translate to Spanish the last one? Our public relations department would have done. Uh, let me see. Our public relations department would have done a better job. Uh, nuestro departamento de relaciones públicas hubieran hecho. Algo así, hubieran. así lo diría. Hubieran. Hubieran hecho un mejor trabajo. Uh, okay, but, okay, yes. In Spanish, it might be a little bit different from the grammar that we have there because remember that in Spanish, what we do is we we say it the way that we say it in Spanish. I mean, it's not that word by word we're going to translate, right? Good. Any other question? We're going to do that. All right. Just stop here. Okay. Uh, we have a homework for Friday. Okay. For Friday, what you are going to do is you are going to come and teach to the class anything. Anything that you want to teach, that you want to show how to do something how to fix something, how to do anything, how to, uh, I mean, anything that you want to teach the class, uh, you are going to come and do it. Something simple, not that not that complicated, right? So for example, um, if you want to teach how to change a, a tire in the car, uh, if you want to teach how to clean something, very nice. If you want to teach, for example, Daniel Kimis can teach something in the guitar, right? Um, but uh, the explanation, right? Or a recipe, how to cook uh, blue ribbon, for example, I don't know. Uh, so you are going to, you can bring uh, a presentation or a document with step-by-step -step or pictures, okay? So you can explain to the class uh, what is this about and that's it. Okay, do you have any questions for the homework for this Friday? It's difficult. <laughs> do you think, no, I mean, what you have to do is to teach something that you know. I mean, you don't have to research. Uh, you have to teach something that you already know. For example, how to plant a flower, a rose properly, so it grows very nice. So that is very simple. You take these, uh, some details, for example, you need to wait for the moon that is full. I don't know, details like that. Uh, how to draw picture, how to paint a house, how to paint a car, I don't know. Something very simple in some steps. Anything that you are happy teaching, something like that. Okay, any other question with that, with the homework? Teacher, I, 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 I <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, if the, it's a prepare uh, uh, the class understands and the uh, something uh, uh, thing. Uh, I mean, do you want to do you want to teach something in English? I mean, an English topic, anything like that. <clears throat> okay. I, I don't know. I was asking you. I mean, you can teach anything. I mean, if you want to, for example, if you want to teach how to prepare a nice breakfast, that is something that you can come and do it. So, first ingredients, the step by step a picture with the presentation and that's it. So that is something that you can do anything. It's free topic, whatever you want to teach, you are going to teach. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good, perfect. <laughs> Any other question with the homework?
Okay, very good. Uh, sometimes in the one ones that we have at the end, uh, some of you have asked some tips for you to learn a little bit more English. So simple things. For first of all, let me tell you that everybody learns in different ways. So the first tip is that you need to understand the way that you learn. For example, me, I learn by writing. I write everything. I write processes and many things. So if I write them, I know that I will understand later on. I always write some. Some other people, they like to do things. Some other people, they like to do, I mean, in different ways. So that's the first tip. You need to understand the way that you learn. The second tip is uh, to practice in different ways. Uh, and practice not only in the class. I mean, here, this is the space for you to speak. So whenever I open the microphone, I hope that you speak because this is the only way for you to practice, right? Also to practice in your free time. I mean, you can look for links uh, and exercises to improve your grammar. If you say, for example, I, I, I have problems with the simple past tense, go and look simple past tense exercises and you are going to find a lot of exercises. And if you have something incorrect, stop and analyze. Why? Why is this incorrect? Check the grammar, check the rules, and then you will understand. Okay? One thing that is very important is that you have to, to think in English. This is very important. I was saying to some of you, I mean, you wake up in the morning and you start thinking, right? What you have to do in the day, where you're going to go. Start thinking in English. Oh, today I have to to go to the school and speak with the teacher of my daughter and I need some coffee. Uh, I have to check if there is sugar. Maybe I have to go to the supermarket. Start thinking English. You know, that is very important. If you don't know one word, one vocabulary, one pronunciation thing, go and look for that in the internet and tomorrow you will be able to use it. But if you start thinking only in English, you are going to get there. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I have a son. He is 17 years old. And uh, I was teaching him English, you know. But he was like, oh, my goodness. No, grandma. No, I don't like English. So I stopped. I, I thought to myself, I cannot force him. Because if I force him, he is going to hate English. And I don't want that one. Right? But like three or four months after that, I stopped. He came to me and he said, uh, he likes video games a lot. And he said, you know, this is a video game that I really want. And I asked, how much is the video game? He says, he is, it's like $100. Okay, let's do something. I'm going to give you every day one or two dollars. If you speak only in English, only in English. And at the beginning, he didn't do it. I mean, he failed. One word he says sometimes, and he fell. But then he speaks English. Suddenly, I didn't teach English because he had to research. He has to think. One day, the person from the water, Crystal Water, you know, he knocked on the door and says, "Ah, oh, Crystal, and my son started speaking English. We don't want today because and he said, oh, I forgot Spanish. So that is going to happen to if you think in English, one day it's going to be automatic, not Spanish anymore. So do that one. Same. We are going to check the attendance. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present, teacher. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Yasmin Martinez Carpio. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present teacher. Good. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Teacher. Pre present. Good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. 
Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. José Alberto Baños Hernández. Present. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Right here. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Arroda Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Sol Sol Mayanel Ramírez Ábalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Okay, the one one of tonight is for present Osmina. teacher. Present, excuse me. Okay, perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow at Dream English. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. night. No. Hello. Do you have any questions or anything to say? <laughs>